Hi everyone, Travis Burnett with Bex Hybrids. I'd be the Northern Indiana field agronomist. I'm in Atlanta today with Colin Shear. Colin runs our PFR farm here in Atlanta. Uh, it's coming up on the 1st of July here and wanted to go over fungicide timing on beans and, and talk a little bit about why that's so important yep. and why the R3 timing is so important. That's what we recommend. And Colin's going to share some tips and tricks we found along the way in PFR. So we talk a lot about R3. So R3 on soybeans is when you have a 3 16 inch pod. You know that? Yep. Yep. 3 16 inch pod at one of the upper foremost nodes. Okay, so we have a 3 16 inch pod at one of these nodes. That's when we're at R3. So we're just getting to the point. That's not a pod yet. That's just a flower that's dying off. But we're getting to the point where we're really close to that R3 timing. So why is that important? Well, about 75%, maybe not quite that, 65 to 70% of our yield on a soybean plant comes from a specific portion of that plant. It's nodes 6 through 13. Okay, so if I get the counting here, there's a node here, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So this soybean plant I have here was planted the first week of April. Yep, April, 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 April 5th. April 5th. Yep. Okay, we have 12 nodes on this plant already. So if we know that this portion of the plant, or this section of the plant is what's providing majority of our yield, that's the section of the plant that we want to protect with the fungicide application. And really what we found, Colin, at PFR, that fungicide application, if we get that timing correct, it's like clockwork, okay? oh, yeah. even in the absence of disease. Yep. Really what it comes down to, you got to keep in mind, every trifoliate you see here, so this trifoliate feeds this node that it's connected to. This trifoliate feeds this node it's connected to. Okay, so if we know that that area of the plant's doing the heavy lifting, that's providing majority of our yield. If we can keep that area healthier longer, uh, keep it thriving longer, maybe catch an extra rain or two during that grain fill period, we get increased seed size. And that's what's driving that, that very consistent uh, return we get with the fungicide application at R3. But R3 is always tough, right? You won't carry out a little ruler, okay, major for a 3 16 cent mm -hmm. pod. So rather than that, what I'd, I'd prefer you guys to do when you go out and start counting nodes, I want you to find nodes 6 through 13. Okay, make sure that those are there, and we want beginning pod development on those nodes. So if we come out here too early, say we want to, we, we, we uh, come out and we spray an R2, right? Which this beam behind me isn't quite R2. Uh, what's that one there? That was planted yep. the end of April, yep. right? Yep. So this, this plant, for instance, uh, it's also getting very close to R3, uh, but this was the same variety we're sending in our planting date study. It's the same variety planted uh, two weeks apart. roughly two and a half weeks later than, yep. than that first one, okay? So again, if we count nodes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This one only has ten nodes currently. Okay, and if I zoom in here, not nearly as far along, but this is R2, okay? So this plant is at R2. So if we were to spray today on this plant, we're only protecting up to ten nodes. Say nodes 12 through 13 or 10 through 13, they don't exist yet, right? And that's why the timing is so important. Vice versa, if we come in too late, call it. Say we've got an R4 plant, which that's when we have a three quarter inch pod in one of those nodes. Uh, we come in at R4, so much of this bottom section of the plant that's providing, again, a good yep. majority of that yield, you, those pods are so far along, we're not able to influence them. Okay? And that, that's why R3 timing is so important. And again, it's not necessarily the R3 or the 316th of pod, it's those specific nodes that we're influencing at that time. Okay, so uh, timing. Super important, we have roughly seven to 10 days, depending on the variety, depending on the year to, to hit that window. Okay, and it gets a little challenging, and, and Colin's gonna share some things we found in PFR to help that pass even more, be more efficient. Right, where are some tips and tricks we found in PFR? Yeah, so um, a, lot of, a lot of the tricks we found is, is due on the leaves, you know. Um, the fungicide doesn't really travel a whole lot on the plant, so you need really, really good coverage. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can try to target your application on, with a heavy dew, you know, um, I know there's a stat out there that's like 163 gallons uh, per acre on a heavy dew. So I mean, imagine how much how much carrier is out there helping you along. It's free carrier, right? yeah, yeah. The field, right? free free carrier. So if you had a heavy heavier dew, you could you you might be able to even back that carrier your spray carrier down to maybe a 15 or 10 because you still got good coverage out there with dew. Now, Colin, I'm a big time operator. Okay, I, I farm thousands thousands of acres. I can't spray all my acres with a new on, right? Yep. I just logistically can't make that yep. happen, right? Yep. Are there other things we can do to, to make that pass more efficient? Yeah, so um, scouts, you know, scout your beans. You know, if you have, if you've got some, you know, your beans that are high tolerant with disease or something, you know, spray those with the dew and then um, you, you can get to your, your the other beans later in the day. Yep. You, you, 
kind of hit on something else I think that was really neat. I don't know if everybody caught it or not, but you said you can actually back your carrier rate down when the dew's out there. Yep. Right? And we're not saying don't spray, yeah. only spray when there's a dew yeah. on. Yeah. But we, that carrier rate's more important in the afternoon when there isn't a dew. Yep. Right? Yep. That's what yep. we're getting at. Yep. Okay, so those are some tips and tricks we found along the way. Again, if you get that timing correct, you protect nodes 6 through 13 on that soybean plant. That response to fungicide is very, very consistent year in, year out. Now I'm a big proponent of spraying every acre, every year, regardless of disease pressure, yep. if we get that timing correct. Yep. Now, say we get rained out, we get a bunch of rain like we've had here in certain parts of the state the last few days, and we can't hit that window, we may want to think about pulling that fungicide out, mm -hmm. carry that over till next year, yep. return that chemistry, yep. because that consistency of that return really goes down if we miss that window of, of R3. Yep. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or your, your seed advisor or dealer that you work with, the extra representative you work with. We're happy to, uh, to come out and show you guys exactly where your fields are and make sure we get the timing right on this fungicide. Thank you.